Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my interview makeup tutorial. So I recently got an interview at this company that I really, really am excited about. I don't know if I got the job yet, but I'm waiting to hear back. But um, I find that, at least for me, <laughs> I'm a very anxious person. As I said, multiple times on this platform, but being in makeup that makes me feel confident really helps me in the interview room. So I figured I would just sit down and show you the makeup that I did that day. So if you wanna see how to get my go-to interview makeup, then just keep watching. Okay, so I already moisturized and I'm going with primer. I am using the Smashbox Primerizer today. I like to use the Primerizer because um, my skin is very dry and I love having dewy skin. So, having that effect on the skin that I want really helps me be confident in my uh, interview and also it just really like makes my makeup look really good then we're gonna go in with foundation I'm not gonna start on eyes first today because I'm doing very very minimal things on my eyes I'm going in with a stick foundation and the only reason I'm using this particular foundation is because I did get a little bit of sun and I stress a little bit but um, a lot of the foundations that I like to use are a little bit too light on me right now so this one is actually my perfect shade this is the wet n wild photo focus stick foundation in the shade shell ivory so I'm just going to apply this all over my face I'm gonna use a little bit more than I usually do because I feel like uh, having an even skin like an even face makes me feel a lot more confident. So I'm going more full coverage today instead of my usual like light to medium coverage foundation. And I'm especially gonna apply a lot over my cheeks because that is where I have my hyperpigmentation and just put a little bit over here. And then we're just gonna blend that out. I'm using a Real Techniques brush. This is the Expert Face Brush. It's one of my favorite brushes to use for buffing out foundation. I just feel like it spreads it really nicely without losing a lot of coverage. And there my face feels a lot more even. I still feel like it has a lot of dewiness. As you can see, my forehead is super, super dewy today. Um, the lighting in this video might be a little weird. It was supposed to be a lot nicer out today and like sunny and it's clouded over pretty quickly. So that kind of sucks. I'm just going to build up again a little bit more on my cheeks here because I want more of a even look to my cheek and for this part i'm really just pressing it not swiping as much as i was before because i want to keep all of that product where i put it okay great now we're going to move on to concealer so for concealer i have been using the mark jacobs accomplice concealer in the shade fair 10 which is the lightest shade it comes in this little compact here and then you pull it out and this is the product so my favorite way to apply this is actually with the finger uh, i don't like it applied with a sponge or with a brush so i'm not using that and i'm just going to kind of draw it underneath my eyes. I'm using this concealer specifically because it's pretty close to my skin tone and it's pretty close to the shade that I use for foundation. That way it's not a highlighted look, it's more like just to cover my dark circles, which I have been using a new eye cream. Well, it's not a new eye cream, it's the one that I went back to from Bare Minerals. It's their Skin Longevity uh, eye cream. And honestly, my dark circles have just like gone away overnight, but I still just want a little bit more so people know that I slept the night before and I wasn't freaking out about the interview, so I did not sleep, you know? And then we're gonna take it up onto the lid, the leftover concealer, and just prime the lids that way. Again, we're not doing a whole lot with uh, eyeshadow today because I feel like for interviews, less is more, but we still want to cover the veins and give a little bit of something. So I feel like my eyes are pretty well covered. Um, I have actually not been sleeping lately, so my dark circle on this side, which is always a little bit darker and more deep set than the other side, is a little bit crazy. So I'm going to apply just a little bit more but I'm going in like this and taking the product onto my finger and just really pressing it and trying not to blend it out so much. And then I'm gonna take a little bit more on my lids to cover the veins and the darkness up in this corner here. A lot of darkness, <laughs> at least for me, resides there. So if we can cover that, I will look like I slept. Great, so now we have a concealed and a foundationed face. Okay, so what we're going to do now is set the face because the rest of the products I'm using are powder products. So I'm going to go in with my trusty ba ba <laughs> Beauty Bakery Flower pow Powder. I cannot say this no matter how many times you use it in a video. I'm just going to take a little bit of this. It's my favorite powder to use. It is great because it sets the face and um, the concealer down really, really well. It like doesn't budge, but also it doesn't mattify my face to the point that I feel like I'm suffocating. It still lets some of like my oils and like the hydration and the dewiness peek through. It just helps to set them so that it won't budge. 
I love this and I think I'll be repurchasing this. I don't think I'll try any other powder because I don't want to. This works so well. So I'm just going over the areas that I use concealer and I'm just setting it with a little bit of powder. And I really, really set my nose because that is the place that I <laughs> touch the most. I guess another thing I love about this concealer is that you don't really have to set it. Like I don't feel like it creases an extreme amount, which no matter what other concealer I use, it creases and it like um bunches up into my under eye creases, which makes it a lot worse than it is. But for this, I have been talking for a hot minute and like I really don't have to blend out any creases because there are none. It's not collecting. It's really just a very nice concealer and it feels so lightweight. I don't own much from Marc Jacobs, but the stuff I do makes me want to buy even more. And even though I want a dewy face, I do set my under eyes a little bit more in the summertime because at least the place I was interviewing, there was no <laughs> air conditioning. And uh, I didn't really want to sweat. <laughs> it's also finally getting to be warmer in New Jersey. Not necessarily nicer because uh, it rained all last week even though it was warm which is why I haven't filmed a video. I wanted to film this all last week but finally it is getting warmer so I have to start setting my makeup more. So that is the set face. I still have a lot of doing to see on my forehead even though I set it with that powder. This powder is amazing in the way that it does not dry out the face. It's awesome. I love it so much. And then we're going to go in with the face. We're going to finish the face before we move on to the eyes. So the only bronzer I've been using since I purchased this, I can't, this is the worst packaging ever. I can't ever open it without breaking a nail. Okay. This is the um, primer infused bronzer by e.l.f. and forever sunkissed. This is beautiful. Perfect. My perfect shade. I literally have not been able to stop using it since I purchased it. It just gives a nice diffused bronzer and I feel like it really does like stay the whole day. I don't know if that's because it's primer infused or what, but I'm taking it on a Real Techniques blush brush and I am just patting it onto the areas that I want to be bronzed. I've been using this method since I saw Mariah Leonard do it a while ago and it just really feels like it gives the most natural bronze to the face without looking too harsh, um, too chiseled. I don't really like that. I like like a bronzed look, not like I guess a contoured look, so I'm happy with having my face just look sun-kissed, not chiseled. And also this bronzer isn't too pigmented off the top, off the bat, I mean. Um, it's really just a nice buildable bronzer, which I love because I am very fair. Even though I did get a little bit of sun, I'm still really fair, so having something like this really just helps to not make me look too fair helps look more natural on my skin. And I already feel like I have so much life back in my face. Bronzer is quickly becoming my favorite product to use. <laughs> trying not to overdo it, but I really just love a nice subtle bronze. So that is the bronzer. This is also $6, which is crazy, crazy good. Then for blush, pretty much the only blush I've been using since I got this is from Alamar Cosmetics. This is the Colorate Blush Trio in Light Fair. And I have been mixing the two shades Paraiso and Scorcher together to get this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful blush shade. So I take, I dip mostly into Paraiso and then like one or two dips in Scorcher. I tap off the excess because they are pretty pigmented, which is nice. And then I just go in and uh, blush up my face with a very light hand. And I'm using a Luxie tapered highlighting brush, but I like to use this as a blush brush. And obviously, like, you can build up the color as much as you want. I always go in very light at first because I feel like blush, if used incorrectly, can make you look kind of like a clown. <laughs> and that's just not the look I'm going for if I'm interviewing. Also, I never interview in a Hawaiian shirt, but it was just, I'm going to work soon. And um, I can wear Hawaiian shirts to work, so why not? I also put a little bit back on my nose just to give my face a little bit more rosiness. I feel like there's so much life back in my face now. I always hate like doing makeup tutorials and looking in like the viewfinder and seeing just bare face. Like it just looks so strange to me. Um, okay, and then for highlighter, some people don't have to, you like, don't have to go with highlighter for my headshots. I didn't use highlight because I feel like it looks super unnatural. But for interviews, I do like using highlight. I have been using this highlight. This is On the Cusp by ColourPop. It's actually 20% off right now. I don't know how long it's going to be 20% off, but it's one of Kathleen Light's collabs with ColourPop. And it is my favorite, favorite highlighter of all times. 
it is pretty intense so I like to go in pretty <laughs> lightly at first and just build it up because I feel like it gives this nice glassy effect on the cheeks which I feel like doesn't look makeup-y it looks healthy like I want a healthy sheen and that's what I think of when I think of this because I didn't put on a lot I'm still pretty highlighted definitely compared to this side but it doesn't look like I'm packing on highlighter you know and like I said if you feel good like you want to put on a bunch of highlighter do that like do whatever makes you feel good this is essentially makeup that makes you feel good no matter what and even on the days where I don't want to get out of bed um, I will just do this makeup and, and go outside because you know feel confident in yourself and the rest will you know work itself out or what's what I'm trying to tell myself I've been going through a breakup for the better portion of a month and it's just like every time I think I'm okay like another horrible thing comes out about this guy that I used to be dating um and it just like takes me back so when I have those things I will go and just do some makeup and just forget about the fact that I wasted time with someone who didn't care about me so a little bit of highlight can make you feel good even when you don't feel all that good inside and finally, we get to move on to the eyes. So I'm going to zoom you guys in a little bit for eyes. Okay, uh, obviously I would be doing brows first. I'm very bad at doing brows on camera, but I'm going to try for you guys because I'm getting better and better. I have been going back and forth. I used the Makeup Geek Brow Pencil. I've used the Balm Brow Pencil, uh, the Iconic London Cushion, and now I'm back to the Anastasia Brow Wiz. I just keep coming back to this. I feel like I get good brows every single day when I use this. Um, when I use the Iconic London one, I have to be careful I don't apply too much product. When I use the Makeup Geek one, it is a little too warm for my brows. And when I use the Balm one, it becomes, I realize it's a little bit too waxy for me. It's not as pigmented as I remember it being. I'm also growing out my brows, so there's a lot of little hairs over here, but I follow Makeup by Trains, and she has the most beautiful eyebrows I've ever seen. <laughs> So I asked her, like, what do I do to get brows like yours? And she said to grow them out. So I'm growing out my brows, and we will see how it goes. So I'm just very lightly with, like, the lightest hand because this is pretty pigmented stuff. And then I just brush it up. And I feel like I don't have to do as much now that I've been growing them out, but I do have a lot of, like, this area is really sparse on my brows. So I do kind of, like, overdraw a little bit. To make it look like I have more of, more of a brow than I actually do. And I'll probably even fill this in a little bit more than this. Sorry, I'm like, <laughs> want to do it down here, but I want you guys to see what I'm doing. And of course, I'm going to add more of a tail up here as well. Because I love the full brow look. I just don't have the full brows. So that is pretty much how my brow is going to look. This brow is always going to be better than this brow. The hairs on this one grow super, super funky. Which is cool. They just like grow like eh. And this one, they just grow like they're supposed to. This one's just all, all over the place. So this brow is always going to look a little bit worse than this brow, but they're sisters, not twins, am I right? I know a lot of people are like team brows before foundation, but I feel like they look so unnatural when I do that. All right, and those are the brows for today. Uh, when I do them, like in my mirror up near my, my like vanity area, it is a lot better, but they're not bad, you know, not bad at all. And then I'm going to set that down with some ColourPop Brow Boss Brow Gel. This has been my tried and true. I find that nothing holds them in place nearly as much as this one. Even the Benefit Gimme Brow, which I like for making my brows look fuller, does not keep them up as much. It lets them kind of fall down as soon as the gel stops holding. But this one always makes it look really nice and beautiful. So I just keep going back to this gel, and it's like $6, so it's my favorite, and like, because I have such a little hair over here, making all these longer hairs stand up makes me have the illusion of a fuller brow. Done. Brows are done. Let's move on to the eyes. So for eyes today, I'm actually going to be using the palette that I have been using as a mirror. This is no longer available, but I feel like there's so many neutral palettes out there that like you don't need to have this one. This is the Clay Play Volume 1 by Tarte. This is 
what it looks like. It's very nice neutral. Um, I love the shades in here and I feel like it's very versatile even though it is very neutral. And the the quality of these eyeshadows are some of the best I've seen from Tarte. So I just keep on going back to this. So I'm going to go in with this first shade here which is Journey. This is pretty much my favorite transition shade of the palette. It's just a little bit darker than my natural skin tone. So it gives like a defined area to the crease like it looks more defined than it is without looking like I'm wearing a ton of makeup so I'm taking that on this wet and wild brush that I've had for literally five years and I'm just dusting this into the crease now usually when I don't do interview makeup I blow my eyeshadow out in like a cat eye effect this one I'm not gonna do that as much I'm also not gonna pick the shadow up as high I'm literally just going right to where the crease ends but you can see there's like a definition between the two. So Journey itself, I would buy this whole palette again just for because it is my favorite transition shade of life. Like honestly, I could go to the interview just wearing this, but I want to jazz it up a little bit more. So I am going in quite a few times with this shade. I just feel like I love this shade so much, Journey. I just feel like it just uh, looks so good. Okay, then I'm taking a, another brush. This is going to be a smaller brush. This is from Luxie. This is the 121 mini tapered brush. And I'm going to go into this shade Ember here, which is this one. Um, this is another warm toned brown. They do have a shade Stone over here, but this is more neutral. And I do want a bit of warmth to my eyes because it makes my green hazel blue eyes pop. So we're taking Stone on this little brush. And we're going to start by just packing this on the outer corner. And not dragging it in but also not like making a harsh line with it. We're gonna kind of back blend it a little bit to give the outer corner just a little bit of definition. And then we're gonna blend the rest of this into the crease over here. And I'm building this up a little bit. We're gonna go in with another shade eventually, but I love the effect it gives when you start blending from the outside inward. It almost gives like almost a gradient effect to the lid that like this area is always gonna be uh, bald and in, in the sense that it has no eyeshadow on it but it just looks so cool when there's eyeshadow all around it and there's like a little bit of residual i just feel like it gives such a spot eye effect almost i don't know but i'm really loving that look lately but again we're not pulling this out as like a cat eye i'm only going to where my eye ends over here i'm not blowing it out at all because i feel like that looks very unnatural and some people would call it unprofessional in a professional like business interview setting and then the next shade we're going into is actually one of the bronzer shades here i'm going into the shade timber i wanted a deeper brown but the other browns in this palette either pull too cool toned or too neutral for me or not you either go with like a dark one or this and i really do like the way these bronzer shades blend out so i'm just taking a little bit a little little, little bit of tinder timber not tinder and just Focusing that on the very, very outer corner of the eye and blending it inward and very slightly into that crease as well. So that is the kind of look I'm going for. It'll look different, obviously, when I put on uh, mascara. And then we're just going to go back in with no additional product with that blending brush and just make sure everything blends together. Now, this is a preference for you. You could either add like a little bit of smudged liner to the top. Um, I'm just going to take this shade Instinct right here, which is almost pretty much the same color as my skin tone and I'm just going to pat this on the area that we didn't put any eyeshadow just to give it a little bit more like purposeful definition like I didn't put any eyeshadow here for a reason and also this has like the tiniest little bit of shimmers in it so that it just gives us that I'm going to finish up the eyes I'm going in with this luxe brush an ex gave me and I did not give back and I'm dipping into ember first and I'm just going to run that on my lower lash line here. Again, I'm not going to try to blow out the lower lash line. It's going to keep it pretty close. Then I'm going to go into the shade Timber with a little bit and tap off a lot of that. And just focus that on the outer corner here. Just so the shades match. When you're looking on, it's like, ah yes, a continuation. And then I'm just going to blend it all out with that shade Journey again. The first one we went in with, my favorite transition shade of all time. And I'm going to bring this one kind of in more toward the inner portion of the eye to just mimic what we did on the top and just blend everything out with that shade and the eyes are done just kidding not really I do have to put eyeliner in this I've never used so much eyeliner in my life as this one this is from essence and I don't even think they make this specific eyeliner anymore this is the extreme waterproof 
pencil in the shade 06 silky nude I have never used so much this also I bought like two years ago and it still is my favorite favorite nude I'm just gonna put this in the waterline really quickly I can't do this on camera either so hold on ah yes and now my eyes look more open and awake and alert which is what we want employers to see I can be awake and alert and uh, all that stuff so the last thing we have to do is um, mascara for the eyes and then we'll move on to lips and we're done with the look. So I'm just taking my favorite mascara. This is from Tarte. This is the Man Eater Mascara. My literal ride or die. Recommend it so much to everyone. We'll repurchase it over and over again. And I'm just coating my lashes with this. I just... Let me zoom you guys in even further. Can you see the magic that's gonna happen right now? Like this specific wand grips every single eyelash and just lengthens it like crazy. Okay. Like, it's insane. It makes my eyelashes look so long. So that's why it's my favorite of all time ever. It's not the most volumizing mascara, I don't think, but honestly, I've realized that I go for length way more than volume. Also, this uh, builds up on itself really well, so you can do a second coat if you want. I do only a little bit on the lower lashes because this mascara, while being the best one ever, does have a tendency to smudge just slightly if you overdo it on the lower lashes. And so I'm just going to put a mascara on the other side and I'll be right back. Okay, I have lashes on. See, I feel like mascara, if I had to get rid of every single makeup product and only keep one, no, I think it would be brows actually, but the only thing, like, I could live forever just doing brows and mascara that would be I would be content with that however I don't have to choose that so I'm not going to but just know brows and mascara are my two favorite things ever with makeup all right and the last thing I have to do is lips now because we did such a neutral look on the face like you could really use any lipstick lip gloss lip stain anything that you want whatever color you want whatever color makes you feel like the baddest bitch out there like you are Lizzo singing truth hurts at the BET awards whatever makes you feel like that do it for me a nice super glossy lip makes me feel like the most confident bitch out there <laughs> i don't know why so i'm just using a lip liner and a um gloss i'm using this lip liner in the shade skimpy from ColourPop. i don't know if this is still there but it's again a lip liner that i've used constantly and i'm just going to uh outline my lips and fill them in a little bit with this shade i love this i wonder if this isn't a lippy stick formula it's just like a half shade darker than my lips currently and then the gloss I'm using is from Urban Decay. This is the Hi-Fi Shine Ultra Cushion Gloss in the shade Midnight Cowboy. This, um, I'm not a big fan of plumping glosses. This is a plumping gloss, but it is a light pump plumping gloss. So it doesn't feel like it hurts when it plumps. It just feels a little minty, a little tingly. And my lips look so good <laughs> when I wear this. I consistently go back to this lips, lip gloss and it looks so good. Like I just feel like it ties everything together, having a nice glossy lip. And it does feel a little bit cooling, so I know it's plumping. But yeah, guys, uh, that completes this video. This is the completed look. This is my business casual, I guess, uh, interview makeup. I feel so confident in this. I feel like I can go into the room and just kill it and just market myself the best that I can. You know, makeup is great and makeup for me is like a therapy. Um, it is a creative outlet, but it is also something that just makes me feel good inside. Like when I have a good makeup day, like I can take on the whole freaking world. So it's great to have that and like have a go-to look for interviews when, you know, you are probably not having the best day ever. They are pretty terrifying. Um, yeah, so uh, that completes this video. Sorry I say that three times in every video, but uh, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you want to, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.